Hello and welcome back to My Own Worst Enemy. Time to start turn number five of Triumph and Tragedy. And I'm hoping this time the audio works out a little better than last time. There was something went wrong and I managed to only record the left channel of audio, but I think I've got that sorted out now. In fact, I ended up having to put a new hard drive in the computer and reinstalling everything. So I, I'm back to back to the beginning on that. So there still may be some troubles ahead. I don't know. I'm hoping to get that all sorted out, but I think everything's okay. So we're going to go ahead and get started. The year marker is on 1940. That is our turn five current year. Over here, we have the phase marker set to new year. Victory check would be the next thing we do, but I don't think anybody's really near victory at this point. The closest perhaps would be the USSR, and it would be, they would be closest to an economic victory, I think it is, where that would be their population, or not population, their production level is 12, plus their peace dividends, which would be, uh, 14, uh, no, that would be 16. And then they have an atomic research value of one. So that's another one. So 17, and they would need 25 for an economic win at the start of the new year. And I don't think anybody else just looking here is going to come close to that either. So no one is going to win via victory check here. So I've already shuffled these decks. It says reshuffle the decks again. So let's give them a quick shuffle here. Like I said, you can never shuffle these things too many times. And I'm just going to shuffle them once more and kind of mix them up. Oops. Without dropping them all over the game board, that would be tragic. Part of the tragedy. And I'm going to split the deck just here. And we will do the same thing for the investment deck. Just a quick shuffle. And I did shuffle these really good. I always shuffle these really, really, probably too much because I really, really want the randomness in this game. One of the fun things about Triumph and Tragedy is so many ways things can turn out. All right, so that's going to be the investment deck shuffled. We have completed our victory check, and now we go to the peace dividend, which I've got to find my little cup. Here it is. So peace dividends, we'll give them a shake. And I'm going to do the Soviets first. Actually, no, we're going to start with the Germans first. I think we've been starting with the Germans. So we'll start with the Germans first. They draw a one. So that's now two peace dividend points for the, the uh, Germans. Now the Soviets will draw one and they get a one. And then finally the Western Alliance, zero. And so we'll put this cup back. I'll just set it over here. So that is the peace dividends. And now we need to determine the turn order again. So I'm going to grab a black D6 and give it a roll. It's a one. So that's going to put us on the axis. So they're going to be first and the turn order will go counterclockwise. So starting with the Germans in the uh, production phase, they're Production value, build value is going to be the less of pop or industry. So population's at 14. We will give a 14 to the Germans. And so let's take a minute here to look at the German situation. They are, I think, pretty close to going to war. In fact, this, this turn may determine whether or not they actually go to war. And part of that is going to depend on, I think, one thing they're going to want to try to do, the U.S. currently has... Uh, one German influence marker in it, they would like to get at least one or two more in there to make it more difficult for the West to get the United States to join. We note that soon the United States is going to start automatically leaning towards the West. And if the Germans can offset that, that's going to be so much the better for them. So I think they're probably going to want to get some good diplomacy cards if they can. So they may want to get a few more diplomacy cards than usual. They also need to build their troops up even more. They've got some threes in here, but if they're going to go to war, they want to beef up some of these other units a little bit. So I think they're going to be leaning towards doing just that. Technology-wise, they are looking pretty good. They've got heavy bombers, air forces move three, motorized infantry, infantry moves three, LSTs, so they could do uh, overseas invasion, ground, or coastal invasions, and sonar fleets fire, uh, fleets fire at S3, it says. So that's pretty good. Like I said, I think they're going to focus on diplomacy and maybe uh, building up their units. I think that's going to be where they're at. So let's go ahead and figure out how they're going to do this. I think right off, we're going to start by increasing 
this infantry up to three. So that's going to take them down to 13. This infantry up to two. Now we're down to 12. And this armor is going to go up to two. So we're two, at 11 now on spin points. And that is going to, well, actually, let's increase this infantry to four. So now we're down to 10. And I should have been marking those as I was upgrading, because you can only upgrade a cadre once during this phase. But that actually, I'm going to upgrade one more. So they're going to go down to nine. And I'm going to upgrade one of these infantry to four. And that's going to be it for the upgrades they want to do. And I think we're going to get, um, I'm going to say six action cards. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Because remember, they are trying to knock that down to three. They are trying to get influence into the U.S. if they can. And also, this is these are the cards that will allow them to maneuver once we get into the uh, spring, summer, and fall phases. So that's going to be their, their action cards. And these final three will be investment cards. So one, two, and three. So that's going to be the production phase for the Germans. Now the turn goes over to the Soviets. And they are at peace, so their industry level sits at 12. So they will get 12 points to spend. And now we need to think about what the Soviets are thinking here. They also need to upgrade their military much more so than the Germans did. So let's go ahead and start doing that. And actually, I'm going to try to I'm going to try to mark these. Let me see if I can find something to mark this with. I got some little cubes here. We'll pull out. Those are always handy. So let me grab something that'll stand out on that red. We'll use blue cubes. All right. So we're going to start here by. So we're going to do some upgrading. So they'll take us down to 11 with this first upgrade. And it will be, let's upgrade this armor. So that's one upgraded. And then we're going to go down again to take us to 10. And upgrade this infantry to two. And down to nine. We will upgrade this infantry to three. And down to eight, we will upgrade this infantry to two. Now that's four points spent. Looking at the diplomatic situation, they're doing pretty good investment-wise too. They have motorized infantry, heavy bombers, and air defense radar. They also have atomic research one. So I think what we're gonna do here is just split the cards four and four. So that'll get rid of the eight. So we'll get four action cards for the Soviets. One, two, three, four. That'll go in their hand. And then four investment cards. One, two, three, four. And that will conclude their production. Then we'll go over to the West. And they are currently sitting at 12. So they're at 12. We'll put the D20 on a 12. Now, the West is looking the worst of all, in my opinion. I think that's the case. So they're going to want to definitely probably build up their military. And again, honestly, they're going to want diplomacy cards, too. So they're going to want action cards more than investment cards at this stage. So I think they're going to focus on action, building up their units, and then maybe a couple of investment cards. Some more research wouldn't hurt. So let's go ahead and upgrade those little Get my little blue cubes back out. It'll be harder to see blue on blue, but that's okay. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to use these little blue cubes. It will be hard to see because I throw them all over the board. So let's just not use those. We're going to use these D6s because they're just sitting there. So let's go down to 11 and upgrade this armor to 2. We'll go down to 10 and upgrade this infantry to two. And 
and I'm going to spend another taking us down to nine. That will upgrade this Air Force to two. Let's go down to eight and we will buy a new unit. Let's buy another infantry. Let's buy a French infantry. I got a feeling we're going to need those. And we'll just put it into Lorraine. Well, let's put it in Paris. And so that, we're down to eight. So that's going to be it for our upgrades. I'll remove these D6s. And I think as far as cards go, we're going to do, I think we're going to do five action cards. One, two, three, four. I don't want to do five. No, let's do four and four. So four. And then one, two, three, four. All right, so that is production for the West. So we are back now to the Germans and we will enter the, and I'm not marking my phases. That was the production phase. So now we're gonna go into the government phase. And we start with the Germans. So let me grab their cards and sort through those. Let's start with the investment cards first. They don't have a lot. They, most of their cards at this point are all action cards. And I think what they're going to do is they are going to play, they have this card again, which is a 19, oops, 1938 science card, which will pair with this heavy tanks card and give them the heavy tanks technology, which says tanks have first fire. So that's really good for the Germans considering they are probably headed, headed towards war maybe even this turn. So let's discard that 1938 science card and that will do it for the Germans for this round. And we now go to the Soviets. And let me look through these and pull out the investment cards. And I think they probably have more investment cards than anyone else at this point in their hand. So let's see what they can do. I don't think they want to increase industry, although they could. And I think what they're going to do though, they have this spiring card, which says blindly take uh, one card from a rival's hand. So I think they want to do this. I think they want to do it to the, hmm, do they want to do it to the Germans or the, they probably want to do this to the Germans. Yeah, I think the Germans will probably be the best target. So they're going to play that and they are going to draw a card randomly from the German hand. So let's go ahead and shuffle these all up, which is a little annoying because I just <laughs> separated the the uh, investment cards from the action cards, but they only had one investment card anyway. So the Soviets are going to randomly pick uh, this one. And so the Soviets just picked a Finland Baltic States card. Well, that's interesting because the Soviets would like to get the Baltic States there. So that's going to do it for their round. We are going to actually get all these little blue blocks. Let's do that. Let's get those out of the way. And now we go to the West and let me sort the West cards out. And so the West is going to play heavy tanks. So that will give them heavy tanks. So they'll put a discard one and we'll put this over here in their technology pile. And they will now have the heavy tanks, which gives first fire to their tanks that ought to offset the German heavy tanks. So that'll if they get into battle, that'll help them for sure. They still have rocket artillery, sonar, and precision bomb sight, which is good. And now we go back to the Germans. And actually their lone technology card is this one. Now this is the code break card. It says inspect the rival's hand. I am playing this solo, so there's that doesn't make a lot of sense in solo terms. So what I'm gonna say, this card, the effect this is gonna have in this game, I'm going to draw one of the, randomly draw one of the West's or the Soviet's cards, whoever they choose. I'm gonna draw a card and set it aside and they cannot play that card the rest of this turn, the rest of this year. So that's how I'm gonna interpret this card. This is, this is kind of what I do when I play a solo game and you run into something like this, make a decision, keep playing, have fun. So in this case, I just made up a quick rule, the code break in this game is gonna be randomly draw a card and they cannot play it the rest of this year. So that's going to have some impact on whichever rival they choose. And it makes this card useful. So who do they want to, who do they want to hit with this? I think, so this is um, Germany. They're going to do it to the West because maybe there's a chance they can pull a Latin America or a, a, a U.S. card out and have that 
sitting aside this turn. So let's do that. They're going to play Code Break. They're going to play Code Break my way. <laughs> so let's do that. And we'll grab and shuffle the cards for, and I got some of these upside down, but they're going to shuffle the cards for the West. And they're going to draw one randomly, and they will not be able to use this card the rest of this turn. So we're going to draw this one. So this is an Atomic Research 1 card and Sonar, so that they cannot use this card for the rest of this turn. So I'm going to set it aside, and we'll turn it. We'll just place it next to their hand pile so that I know they cannot play that card. And now we will go on to the Soviets. who still have a lot of tech cards in their hand. And actually, the... Oh, let's see. Yeah, the Soviets have that same card, the Code Break card again, so they can do the same thing here. They also have the Sabotage card. So they can reduce a rival's industry by one. And I think they're going to do that, actually. They're going to play a sabotage on Germany. Reduce their industry by one. So now their Germany is tied with their pop. It's, both of those are down to 14. So that's going to be it for the... Um, let me straighten these out. That's going to be it for the uh, Soviets. And now we go to the West. And again, I can't pick up that Atomic Research 1 card, but we can pick up their other cards. All right, and they have two of these cards remaining. Uh, let's see if they can build anything with the technology cards. They can't. So they're just going to hold on to those. And we'll just put those aside because they're not going to play those this turn either. So they're going to go right into diplomacy. So again, they are looking for, they really like to get the Germans out of, the German influence out of the United States. And honestly, they like to get it out of Latin America if they can. Remember that with Latin America, that you need access to the West Indian Ocean to get the resources from over here. So that's important. And also looking, there's some other areas. The Soviets, they would probably like to see the Soviets out of Spain, but immediately they only have one card that I can see that fits the bill here for a minute. It's this uh, ethnic ties. And it says that the West may add one friendly or remove one rival influence marker from any of the neutral factions listed. So for the West, it's US, Norway, Low Countries, Romania. So they're going to definitely do this for the West. They're going to play this card discard it and take that German marker out of the United States, which they wanted to do. And that is it for their round. Now we're going to come down here to the Germans. The Germans have no more investment cards they can play. So now they're going to play their diplomacy cards and they are going to play a USA card. <laughs> that's, we'll put it down here because that's what they want to do. They want to influence the US. And so that was their play. Now we go back to the Soviets. And the Soviets may want to play an investment card here. They still have five in their hand, and they do. They're going to play the Code Break card. Now I'm going to use the same rule. When they play this card on one of the rivals, that rival cannot use... We're going to pull a card randomly from the rival's hand, and they can't use that card the rest of this turn. So we'll put these Soviet cards back. So this is being discarded. Now who do they want to do this to? I think they're going to want to do it to Germany. So we're going to randomly pull a German card. And they will not be allowed to use that card for the rest of this turn, this year. So this card, which is the Afghanistan Low Countries card. So they cannot play that the rest of this turn. So now we go over to the West again. The West is going to play a Bulgaria card because the Germans do have an influence marker there. So that's going to be their play. And I need to set this somewhere different here for the uh, diplomacy cards. I'm running out of room. I was going to start with this pile of cards they can't use, so we'll just put it under that. And now we go to the Germans. And the Germans are going to play Isolationalism, and it's going to allow them to remove an influence marker from Spain, further antagonizing the Soviets. So now that comes out of Spain. So that was their move. Now we go to the Soviets. All right, so they have this Industrial Espionage card. Pair with any revealed tech. So any revealed tech that is out on the board that they don't have, and they have that card in their hand, then they can automatically gain that tech. And the only one I see here is Sonar. Fleets Fire S3. So they're going to play that. They're going to get Sonar. And discard that card. And that will be the Soviet turn. Back to the West. The West is got to be careful here. 
Remember that your action cards also allow you to move your units when we get into spring, summer, and the fall. So they may want to hold some cards here for just that purpose. And you also have to look at which card you have based on when you might think you want to move those. If you had a spring, summer, and a fall phase, and you've got spring, summer, and fall cards in your hand, they're going to play a turkey card. So I'm going to put that over here. Their other card they played. So that is it for the west now we go to the germans the germans are going to play a finland card back to the soviets and they are done with their investment cards so i'm going to set those aside diplomacy now they're going to play birds of a feather which will allow them to place a friendly influence marker into spain that over here and now that ussr influence marker goes right back into spain and now we go to the west and the west is going to pass not feeling too good about the west predicament here all right and so now this comes back to the germans they're going to play a spain card and now back to the soviets the Soviets are going to play a Spain card. I'm going to put that over here. Back to the West. The West is going to pass. Back to the Germans. The Germans are going to pass. Back to the Soviets. The Soviets are going to play a Finland card. Back to the West. Who, they're going to pass. Back to Germany. They're going to pass. I should say Germany and Italy. I always forget about Italy, but they're sitting there too. And then back to the USSR, and they are going to pass. So that's going to be three passes to take us out of the government phase, and we will go into the spring phase. And before you start the spring phase, you always check the hands to make sure that everyone is in compliance. And we have, let's see, put these back out. They had a, a Spain and a Finland card sitting out there, diplomacy wise. They have one, two, three, four, five cards in their hand. So that's, that's allowable. So the Soviets are okay. And over here, I've got to be careful not to grab the diplomacy cards again. The West is allowed to have eight and they have one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's allowed. And then the Germans are allowed to have seven. They have one, two, three, four. So that is it for the, the Germans. Straighten these up quickly. Now we can go into, well, we can't either. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. We have to resolve diplomacy first. And that's where I got confused with the, those Soviet cards. I had resolved diplomacy. So let's do that. So there's a Spain card out for the Germans. And... West has two cards out. I don't remember putting those out. Yeah, that's right. I'm trying to confuse myself. So the West had Bulgaria and Turkey out there. The Soviets have a Spain and Finland. The Germans have a Spain and Finland. Those will cancel each other out into the discard pile. So that leaves a USA card with the Germans and no one else has a USA card. That will put another German influence marker back into the USA, which is what they were hoping to do. They were really hoping to get more than that. And finally, that leaves two cards for the West. They have a Turkey card. And so let's grab a West marker and put a influence marker into Turkey, discard that. And they had a Bulgaria, which will simply remove the German influence there. And now we are done. We have resolved diplomacy and we have checked our hand size. And now we can go into the seasons. We can go into the spring. And so that means we are back to the Germans because that's the turn order. And let's see what they want to do. So we have to have a spring card or we could play an emergency card. Now I think for an emergency card, let me get the rule book out. I think the Germans, if they play an emergency card, I think they get, I think it's two moves for the uh, Soviets in the West, but four for the Germans. Let's verify that. So the emergency command, an action card for the wrong season has emergency command value of two for, yeah, the West and the Soviets, four for the Axis. The command priority letter on the card still applies 
and uh, no under emergency command no movement involving aggression is allowed and no combat oh, okay well that's not good if you're the germans <laughs> so for the spring the germans are going to pass we're going to go to the soviets and the soviets industry cards back or the investment cards back down because they won't do us much good here they do have a spring card i think they're going to pass here for the spring so now we're going to go to the west the West, and I will put down their investment cards. We don't need those. They do have a spring card, but I think they're going to pass. Not a whole lot they can do. So that's three passes back to Germany. We are now in the summer phase. All right, I think so. We've reached a point now where Germany, I think, is really considering going into Poland. It's 1940. They do have one influence marker in the U.S. over there, which is going to delay their entry, I think, a little bit. You never know. That depends on how the next diplomacy round goes. But I think, yeah, they're going to declare a violation of neutrality on Poland. So they're going to have to play this summer command card, L9. And so when you, let me grab the rule book so we don't miss anything here. This is a violation of neutrality. Uh, yeah, they don't, they can't wait. I mean, they need to move. They need to take advantage of this situation in the u.s because if they wait another year then that this could change dramatically so we're going to go ahead and just get started here plus the soviets over here running amok they don't like that either all right so violation of neutrality basically when declaring a violation of neutrality aggression against the victim must occur so this is poland world reaction when a violation of neutrality occurs both rivals of the violator immediately draw one to three action cards According to the muster value of the neutral's capital, well, this is Poland, and their muster value, that's a capital city, muster value is three. So three cards will go to the Soviets, and three cards will go to the West. And that will be the world reaction. Add it to their hands, it can be used normally thereafter. So let's do that. And these are action cards, I believe it said. Well, hold on a minute, let's not, let's not do that yet, because it's possible that Germany would. Uh, you know what, they're just going to invade Poland this time. So they could invade, they could go into the low countries here, they could go anywhere really that they could get to but i think for now it's just going to be they are going to yeah for now it's just going to be poland so let's go ahead and draw those three action cards for one two three so these will go to the west and then one two three these will go to the soviets i'm going to put the germans cards back down Let's continue through the rule book here to see what else we need to do. And it says armed miners. An armed miner is considered a separate independent faction and an enemy of its violator. So Poland is now at war with Germany. Upon a violation of neutrality, remove all influence markers. There are none in there. Diplomacy no longer affects that nation and deploy neutral fortresses in its cities and towns according to their muster value. So a Warsaw, we said, was a capital, muster value of three. So they're going to get a, a fortress of value three. Where did I put my neutral markers? Here they are. So we'll get a fortress value of three. And then there's another city with a muster value of two. And so it will get a also get a fortress value of two. All right, and so I think that is it as far as uh, mustering in Poland. We have Fortress now in Warsaw and one in, oh God, how do you say that? Lvov? I don't know if that's right or not. Somebody correct me below, but that's just as close as I'm going to get right now. So we have a size two fortress there and a size three in Warsaw. So now that the Germans have to move their units at this point, they are the aggressor here. So they're going to move an infantry unit into Warsaw from uh, the north here. And then they're going to move another infantry unit from Germany and then another infantry unit from Czechoslovakia. And uh, that is going to be it for their movement for this. Uh, well, is it? Now, hold on here. So I believe the way this works is that was just three movements. This is a nine card, so we can move six more if we want to. Now I'm entering the combat phase of this game and this is the first time. So if I get something wrong, please highlight that in the comments below. I, I wanna know, I wanna get this right. I think I'm doing it right there. I think they do get to move six more if they choose to do so. We may not move six. I'm going to bring a sub out. And so the sub, now 
we can move we're here well not that sub we're going to bring this sub out is it we're, so we can go i think we can go two we can go four right strategic movement yeah i'm pretty sure they can do a strategic move here and they would be starting in the north sea so they could go anywhere from two or four with the strategic moves they could go one two so they're here starting with see one two three four i'm thinking about moving them to the north atlantic let's do that they're going to go one two three four i guess they could go this way too one two three yeah i think that's a legal move so they're going to move into the north atlantic now that they have declared war on Poland, they probably want to start getting their, their fleets moved around. Down here, I'm looking at Italy. I don't think we want to do anything down there yet. So that is going to be it for their movement. Do we want to move anybody into Lvov? <laughs> I'm saying that right. No, I don't think so. Not yet. So it's a very timid encroaching into Poland. And I think that's, that's how we're going to start this. So we need to resolve this aggression in Warsaw. So that is going to be... And I need to look at the, the uh, cards down here for the Germans. They do have heavy tanks. There's no heavy tanks. There's all infantry, motorized moves three. Nope. So I don't think any of these cards, tech cards are going to do them any good here. So in this case, it's going to be three size three infantry units fighting this fortress. So the fortress is defending. It will get to fire first because the Germans don't have anything that gives them first fire technology. So that means that the fortress will be rolling fortress will be rolling and they are at the top of the chart so they're firing first they're also defending but they're going to have to get a four to hit those units and so they're going to roll we'll just use white dice because they're neutral so they're going to roll three of these looking for a four to hit and they roll one four so that's a hit we'll just apply it on one of these german units so that'll take that one down to two So now we're going to have one of the ground forces return fire. So I'm going to grab a red. We're going to grab three red D6. They're firing at that fortress. Let's see what we do here. So they're looking for, before we do that, they are infantry firing at a ground unit. So they've got to get a three or less. So looking for a three or less here against that fortress. That looks like. Two ones and a four, so that's two hits. And that will reduce this down to one. And now I believe the other two German units will get the fire. I think the way this works is when all when each unit in combat has gone, that's going to end a round of combat. And you can only have one round. So the fortress has fired. And then uh, this, let's say this infantry unit has fired. So that leaves these two infantry units, they get a chance to fire. So we're going to start with the three again down here. It's going to get to fire at that fortress. Looking for a, what did we say, three or less? Yep, three or less. And he totally misses. So now we have this final infantry unit looking for three or less. And he hits on both of those. That's going to eliminate that fortress. All right, so that is going to, now we're going to put a Germany control marker in Warsaw. Let's see, is the control marker? Wait a minute here, let me double check this too, because they, they've taken over this part of Poland, but I guess it is the capital, so I guess it is the whole thing. Let's put that control marker in there. I still want to verify that though. Yeah, so looking at the rule book, when enemy units have captured an armed miner's capital, it is defeated. Remove its units and place the conqueror's control marker on its capital. If a different faction later conquers the capital. So I'm looking because does that mean that this, this fortress goes away? All right, so I think I'm reading that right. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, okay, I'm going to say that this fortress is removed. Poland is now German, and I, I'm assuming that's going to mean they get the resources. So let's look at that too. Remove its units, place the conqueror's control marker on its capital. We did adjust pop and resource appropriately. So for Poland, there is one resource marker in there. So the resource marker for Germany will go up one. 
And for the population, so there's a capital city there. So that's the population value is one. And this is a city, so that's going to be two. So I'm assuming the population for Germany now goes up to two. That'll take this pop to 16. And that will conclude the play of that card. So now one thing I should have noted is that when I, what I should have done first, and you do that, this is more important in a uh, three player game that would be in a solitaire game. You should have put out all three of these cards first. Every power should have played a action card face down, but since this is solitaire, we don't really need to do that. So I'm just gonna go ahead now and grab the Soviet card. I still should have played these though, even though I'm doing that solitaire, but that's okay. So this is still summer we're looking at. And now they've got a decision to make here too. So are they going to play a card? I think they are. They have one, they have just one. So they would have played this card. And I'll do that differently next time. I'll actually have the, uh, all the cards out before we go through the, the battles and the combat. So they're gonna play this, this G6 card. And what they are going to do is march into they're going to declare violation of neutrality on the baltic states they're going in there because they don't like what they're seeing here now so they're going to do that that is a uh pound so it's a muster value of one that's going to give germany an action card for that and the west an action card for that this will give a muster value one will give a size one fortress in there and they're going to bring in infantry infantry and armor probably overkill but then again you've got this going on so maybe not and so we're going to resolve this combat now and let's see we gotta look at first fire here and it looks like there's motorized infantry but that's for movement so no first fire surprisingly okay well then that means the fortress will get to fire first and it will fire at it's got to be a ground unit and they're going to choose they're going to choose this infantry, this uh, level three infantry, and they've got to get a, uh, what have they got to get? A four to hit, so four or less. So let me grab the dice tower and get that out here. All right, so they're rolling, and they get only, only one uh, D6 here because they only have a size one fortress there. So they're looking for a four or less to hit, and that's a three, so that's a hit. Gonna take this down to two. And now uh, return fire. So we'll start with that one. And he's gonna fire two. And so infantry attacking a fortress is looking to get a three or less. And there is a, what is that one? I can't see it. It's a two, so that's gonna eliminate that. We will now put a Soviet control in the Baltic states. And so that would have been three moves off of the, the eight here. So they still have five they can move. And I don't think they're going to move anything right now. So let's just leave that out. And we will pass control to the west. Still in the summer season. And let's see, they've got a lot of cards in their hand here. And it's from all those <laughs> violations of neutrality. Uh, so let's see. They do have two summer cards they could play. But you know what? They're going to pass because there's not a whole lot they can really do right here. Just except look on in shock and horror. So I'm going to say they're going to pass. And that brings us back around now to the Germans. And then looking at their hand here, let's see. They could react to what's going on here. They still have a summer command card, two summer command cards. I think for now they're gonna pass. Take us back to the, and I guess I should have removed these cards. They'll take us back to the Soviets. They're also gonna pass. So that's gonna end the summer phase. And then of course we would check for blockades. Now we do have some action taking place here, but still no blockade concerns. So take us into the fall phase, and we'll start with the Germans. They are going to, yeah, they're going to pass. We'll go to the Soviets. They're going to pass, and the West is going to pass again. So 
that'll take us to the winter phase where only the Soviets can move. And they're going to pass again because there's not a whole lot they want to do at this point. And that's going to take us to a new year. So that's going to end this turn. We'll advance the year marker up to 1941. We won't do anything with the board yet until then. I know there's a U.S. flag there, but we're just going to go ahead and advance that. When we come back, we will resolve those kinds of things. All right, so what have we seen happen? So the Germans have gone into Poland. They actually conquered the entire country of Poland. And that inspired the Soviets to march into the Baltic states. Now they've grabbed the Baltic states. And of course, the Western powers are over here just in shock and horror still. So they don't, they're not really sure how they're going to react yet. You know, it might be best for them to wait and just let these two fight it out and just sit back here and collect peace dividends. That's one possibility. Um, they could also try to go for the atomic victory, even though they have no, uh, I don't think they do. No, they have no atomic cards yet, so they can't do that. It's going to be interesting. So we're, we're definitely into what's headed towards a clash between, I think, the Germans and the Soviets. That's going to be interesting to see if that plays out. So I will end it here. And when we come back, we will go into 1941. That will do it. So if you uh, like this video, please give it a like, subscribe if you haven't. And as always, I'll see you back here next time. Thank you for watching.